I believe we first started with Bas Vitaly from his board member from the Next Foundation. And he's on blockchain, blockchain scalability and performance. Um, Bas? about some of the problems uh, that a blockchain project can encounter when they are, uh, when they are going to grow. This is, uh, there are many, it's a very large subject, so I'm only going to touch very lightly on it, uh, as far as it also pertains to one of the projects that we as NXT are doing. Um, I'm trying to keep it short because it's the first talk and there are many speakers, so I'm, I'm counting on trying to cut me off once my time is up. Very simply, uh, blockchain, uh, blockchain pro uh, projects, once they start running, uh, at the first, uh, in, the, in the first stages when they are running, it's all, everything is fine. But due to the uh, architecture of blockchains so that need to be shared over all peers and all nodes, they tend to run into uh, some problems once they reach the momentum that they would need to be very successful. And this is mainly to do with the way uh, data is transmitted and data is stored. So there are several things um, that we encounter and they're mostly uh, captured under the term blockchain bloat. Um, below here, this is from July, uh, because uh, I first was supposed to do this talk in July. This is the, the graph of the size of the Bitcoin blockchain, which is at, at the moment the largest, so the best one uh, as a reference uh, chain. You see is that for almost half of the history, the blockchain stayed very, very, very small and very manageable. Um, at a certain point, the project takes off and tends to get uh, momentum and tends to grow. And what we see is that the amount of information that needs to be stored and shared between all full nodes starts to exponentially grow. This um, see, could not be a problem if you stored it centrally, but because it's a decentralized uh, protocol, it is a problem uh, because one of the things that the whole technology is based on is a, democra a democratic way of sharing all information. The idea is, of course, that every user at any point in time, at least that was the original idea, should be able to download a full node relatively quickly and start validating transactions. Even if they don't have huge server parks, this should be possible. At the moment, I don't know the, 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 the most current rate. I, th I think this one was at 74 gigabytes, but I, if anyone wants to correct me, fine. That was the size of the Bitcoin blockchain. Just 74 gigabytes to start running a full node. Um, for us here, with beautiful, uh, quick, uh, 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 and fast uh, transaction speeds and speeds of the internet that may, be, may not be that big of a problem. But take into account that every transaction also, every time, needs to be validated. Once you're, you're not just downloading the blockchain, you're actually revalidating each transaction. So you also need a computer that can handle that. So, you tend to get centralization. And this is because, just like I said, you need the hardware to be able to do this quickly. Um, here, again, it may not be that much of a problem, but if you go to the countries that are less fortunate, you will see that at least the centralization will go towards the capital. So you have hardware costs. 
and you have bandwidth limitations, if you need to, uh, to download a blockchain and distribute it all over, uh, and keep it distributed, the bandwidth also needs to have a kind of optimum. If you have a low bandwidth, 74 gigabytes is quite a, can take quite a lot of time. So this limitation is also, and we have storage limitations. 74 gigabyte, not really a biggie as in storage maybe, but it is a limitation that you end up with. All these things do tend, um, tend to point towards that, that you will ex start excluding certain people from being able, or at least even starting to try running for nodes. And that's a problem, at least if you consider that the original idea was that everybody should be able to get in, this is a problem and that leads to a form of centralization. I don't mean that it leads to full centralization, we have nobody and we have just one actor, but it does tend to exclude a large group. So, I'm going to explain one way we uh, are solving this within NXT, because like I said, any uh, system, any blockchain system has this problem. It's not just Bitcoin, this is really something that's architecturally, uh, something that's in uh, uh, the way it's designed. Uh, there are many ways, but Ethereum is also trying to solve this, and the BitShares is trying to solve it. We have a different uh, solution, and I'm going to try to explain what we're doing. Our next project, I'm, like I said, I'm uh, part of NXT. NXT is a proof of stake coin, so it works differently from Bitcoin. Um, we have uh, looked at the market, talked to a lot of people, and they also get this. Uh, and they also give this this criticism. So our developers have come up with a new system which will go live middle of next year. And they're coding it right now, which is called Arda. And now there is an evolution of our model. This is what uh, a traditional blockchain looks like, basically. You have NXT and you have one simple blockchain, block, 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 behind each other. And um, everything is done on that one chain. Part of the request that we got from the industry is, yeah, but... Um, if I need to be, uh, from businesses, if I need to be on the same blockchain as all these other businesses, won't that be confusing? If my competitors are on the same blockchain, somebody looks at Block Explorer, sees his tokens on the same blockchain, it's terribly confusing, sorry we'll pass because uh, in marketing confusion is terrible, so we're not doing this. We, look, we would like a private chain, by the way, could you do that? So. With this model, we saw that a lot of businesses that would like to be on a public chain were pushed to a private chain, a closed chain with their own servers, and it's actually not something we really prefer. We, we'd like to have these people all in the same open, transparent ecosystem. So our developers started <laughs> thinking, and they hit upon uh, this thing that is inherent also in all simple blockchains is that if the fees that you pay to make a transaction are, this, are always denominated in the coin of the chain. So if you need to pay fees on the Bitcoin blockchain, you pay them in Bitcoin. If you pay fees on the next blockchain, you pay them in next. And this means that the unit of transaction and the unit of payment in the system are exactly the same, and that leads to a few problems. One problem is, for instance, we have tokens on top of our blockchain. So you can, let's say, uh, you have a coin you make yourself. Uh, one of the most prominent at the moment is Nautilus coin that runs on the next blockchain. To make a transaction of Nautilus coin on the next blockchain, you need to pay it next. That's really confusing. So. The unit serves two purposes, and that one is that our developers decided to pull those two apart. So, in the new system, in the other system, you will have a unit on 
uh, that only takes care of the verification of the consensus, and that's other. That's the main, the mother chain. And the transactions are done on with a different unit on a different kind of chain. And by pulling them apart, we open up a few extra things. So we have one main chain to provide the consensus. We have what we call child chains, and not side chains, child chains that will handle all the transactions. So for instance, um, if I have the Nautilus coin, let's, let's use this one, that will be a completely separate chain where all the transactions by users are done. And the consensus is done on the mother chain. And we'll get, I'll we'll have a nice uh, drawing how it looks. This means that because the consensus is already stored in the main chain, you can prune transactions. You can take away the content from the child chains. Because you, you can always verify that those transactions are correctly done. And the fact that we can prune, so take out, for instance, the cup of coffee uh, from a year ago, and we take it out, it doesn't matter, we just leave a hash that, prove that, that can be used to prove that this transaction is correct, we can keep the child chains really, really, really lean and small. Uh, the current, but this, this needs to be uh, back to the proof, but our developers estimate that each child chain could be left to a maximum of, let's say, one gigabyte. If you, uh, if you need to download that, it's a lot faster. So it's a very lean ledger. There will, of course, always be a, a full ledgers where these transactions can be pulled away from and compared. But the only thing a normal user would need is the hash. If you need to check back that you know this is correct, and this, uh, this transaction is valid. So that will be done on the addition of archival nodes where all the full information is, is stored and that will be an incentivized service. So the people running full nodes with all the information included and those will be used. So these will be, the, uh, these will be people with hardware and the bandwidth to actually facilitate this they will be incentivized to run these nodes. So that looks like this. This is the R, the main chain. This is where all the consensus is done. So it has transactions of its own, because the token on that can also be uh, moved. But each block, these are different chains. So this is a concert ticket chain, a major, a major election chain, U is the bank chain. All these go into these consensus blocks. They are packaged by special users who package all the transactions in there and they put them in one of those blocks. So each chain also has to compete for space here, of course, because it's, it, it's, a, it's a scarce, a scarce good. Um, and they get validated here and then that chain can move up again, can move on. This chain is full, has the full history. Like it says here, you have here the transactions itself, those are stored in this chain, but they can be taken out because they are all already stored in this chain. And this leads to some interesting things that we found, because we made a few things um, cross, you, we, we've made it possible that a few uh, classes of our chain are valid all over the system. So our assets can be traded on each chain, which means, and that's why this chain is in the USD peg chain, you can actually make an asset class that is pegged to an outside currency, for instance, and you can use it on all these chains as a unit of exchange between these separate uh, blockchains, which makes it possible to link the external economy with the internal economy of a blockchain. At least this is what we're aiming at. We're at this moment talking to several partners to see if they can want and can create a business model based on this these kinds of exchanges in between the system. Accounts can, of course, move 
overall change. So it's not that if you use a one, you're only on one chain, you can be on many changes at the same time. Uh, like I said, this is one of the solutions to what we see for one of the biggest problems with, uh, with the scaling problem. In bus for businesses to run their own blockchains is um, a difficult thing. We, we, we really don't like pushing businesses toward private blockchains. Not only for the reason that we're against private blockchains, because we're not, but in, you, as a business you take on a lot of extra costs. In this case, each of these chains will also support the main chain. So any business that gets added to the whole ecosystem will actually bolster the economy and, uh, and uh, the power of the other systems working on. Well, I've kept it short. I hope it was clear. If there are any questions,